So if you're a junior developer or just getting started with Express.js, then you're probably doing a lot of mistakes. So in this video, I'm gonna look what are the mistakes that you should avoid as a junior developer when starting out with Express.js or when building your first application in Express.js from properly using error handlers to validation to security best practices and headers and so much more to go from a junior developer into a senior developer. So if you try to look over the internet for like Express mistakes or what you should do and don't using Express.js, you're gonna find a lot of things and some of them are just super kind of stupid and they're very obvious and some of them are actually good and, and descriptive and actually improve your skill set. So the first one in here, which a lot of developers, especially a lot of junior developers, don't pay attention to when getting started when like building their first Express.js kind of application, which is error handling. So error handling is very, very important. And here, if you just look at the Express.js website or official documentation, it's telling you that Express.js by default catches and processes errors of both occur synchronously and asynchronously. And yes, it has like a default error handling, but like the default is, is it's just pretty, pretty basic and it's pretty default and it always returns like an HTML kind of error to the users which is most of the time not a good idea for your application. So what you gotta do is actually define your own custom error handler with a custom logic. So let's say we've got this particular very simple example in here. So let's say we have got like error handler in here. I'm using a router. I'm just like building, you know, a simple Express.js in here with a router that is bound together with, you know, the actual Express.js application and stuff like that. So technically in here, for example, for the bad approach in here, or, so let's say, oh, you got like an error or something and you wanna throw an error. Of course, when you throw an error here, well, it's gonna automatically being handled by Express.js. And once it does, it's gonna be calling the default error handler. And what the default error handler is gonna do is it's just gonna take the error in here, it's gonna process it in some way. I mean, for the default one, just gonna to return to you, like return to the user, like a 500 internal server error or something and with the error message that you just provided in here, and that's it. So as I said before, by default, Express.js actually provides you with a default error handler. Now to change that one, what you gotta actually go ahead and do, for example, for us, you can go to like a create like a midwares.typescript kind of file and put inside of it like a function. So an error handler is just another simple function. Now, what's actually special about this function is actually has another parameter, an extra parameter that actually comes before all the other default Express like handlers parameters which is the error parameter. And you've got later on, you've got like the request, the response, and the next, which is as usual as like any other kind of Express.js handler. So simply with this one, you can actually customize it or you can do whatever you want. For example, here what I'm doing is actually, actually checking the status code of the response. So if it's 200, I can just return, the, you know, the status code in here. Or if it's still 500 in here, just like, you know, by default, go ahead and do 500, set the response status in here. I can create like, oh, response body with a custom message and it can just do stack trace if it's not production and I can use some custom login, which is pretty good. So you can just log something if you're, if you're using some, you know, login to files or log into a database. So if you have like a custom login logic for your application in here, or you just log into a database or something, or just to the console as we're doing in here, you can actually customize that and actually have a, you know, a regular login in here. And last but not least, you can respond with a response body in here, which is gonna show an error to the end user. Now, once you actually have got your error handler in here, you can go back to the app gen here and you can actually go ahead and use the error handler. So you can do app.use, middlewares, and error handler. And by default, one thing actually you need to not forget about doing this one for error handler is you need to make sure your error handler is defined the last one. So what I mean by this, actually, you want to make sure that the error handler middleware is actually the last one that gets added to the middleware's kind of stack. So that means actually you, for any other middlewares in here, you have got to define them before actually define the error handler in here and it has to be the last one in order for like Express.js to know, oh, there's actually an error handler and it's just going to call it. And of course, for the good one in here, because we already defined an error handler, now it's actually pretty good and I can throw in here, it's gonna be handled by our error handler. And particularly what I can do as well in here, I can just do response.status code. I can say, for example, to 400, and this will set the status code for the error in here I'm just throwing. And of course, that's actually a custom logic we added to our, our you know, custom error handler. Now, if you go to Postman and actually try to call the error handler with the bad example, like with a default error handler from Express.js, this is actually what you're gonna get back. You're gonna get back like an HTML page with the error in here, oh, something went sideways or something, and then some stack trace in here if you're in development. But if you try the good one in here and actually try to call it, there you go. That's actually our customized error handler with a custom message in here. So let's create say it's being called by our custom error handler. And if we look into our console here, the login is working as well. That means our custom error handler is working perfectly. 
That way, using a custom error handler, you can make sure you actually you can customize everything, actually control your errors, control what gets logged out, control what gets returned back to the users to see their errors. The second mistake is not using validation. So there's actually a really awesome library in here called Joy, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you maybe already heard about this one, which is a pretty, pretty nice library. It's for validation, pretty lightweight, and it has tons and tons of stuff. So Joy works perfectly with Express and actually many other servers out there. It's open source, has like almost 20K stars, so that would actually save the day for us. So simply, you can just make sure you go ahead and install that one inside of your Express.js kind of projects in here using like dependencies and install join. And once you do that, you're actually in a good place. Now, for how actually validation works. So let's compare the bad example, we're not using validation at all, versus the good one, like while we're using validation. So let's say in here, we got like a handler, particularly a handler, in here, like a post handler that handles registering a new user. So that means we're going to be needing like a username, email, something like a password, you know, like a user's normal data. So if you're not using like a library, and if you're not using a proper validation kind of mechanism with a middleware, what you would probably want to do is actually access the body in here. For example, you do request dot body to get the post body in here, then you can just do body or for example, say, Oh, F body or not body dot username, go ahead and throw me this. If it's not body dot email, go ahead and throw me this. And if you have tons of stuff, you can just do it again and again and again, which is not super well made. And it's not like you don't have a lot of options. For example, you can't really check if, if the provided email or the string in here is an actual email or not. So there's actually a lot of downsides and a lot of unfortunate stuff and actually can happen or go sideways if you want to will it to use it that way. So instead, what you should want to actually go ahead and use is actually use join with creating a custom middleware. So the middleware here is just be a normal function in here that actually takes the join schema. Now join the validation library I'm going to be using actually can provide you with schemas and schema is something like this. So you just do join dot objects. So you're pretty much expecting an object and the objects in here can have an username. So you can do join, this should be a string and it should be required as well as like, oh, if email, this should be a string, should be an email and this is required as well. Now, inside of the middleware in here, we can simply just like, you know, return a normal middleware function that has request, response, and next. And we can just use our schema in here to validate the request.body. And simply, if there's actually any error, we can just return status 400 in here with the error message in here just to tell the user exactly where the issue is and what they should provide if something is missing. And here, we actually, actually can go ahead and populate the new body value in here. So you can just switch the body value in here with the new validated body. Awesome. And finally here, just not do next in here to move to the next handler. And of course, we can use this valid request or validate request middleware in here in between. So right before calling our handler in here for the good one, for example, this, this is actually the good one in here. So before running that one, we can just call the validate request, passing it the schema that we just created. And right after that one, we can just go in and call our middleware in here, or basically call our handler function or controller in here, where, you know, we just now we're 100% sure that we're going to have user name and email. And if they are not provided by the user, this point in here is not going to be reached because what's going to happen is just going to return a response in here right away if there are any schema issues or validation errors. So if we try our, our handlers in here, the bad versus the good one in Postman in here. So for example, running the bad, it's actually where it returns, it turns, oh, username is required. And of course, if you provide a username, you can just have emails required. So this is a really, really ugly way. And if we try the good one in here with joint validation and our custom middleware in here. So for example, in here, I'm, I'm not providing no username or email. And if I just try to do that, I'm just going to get, oh, username is required. That's it. As simple as that. No stack trace. So it gets, oh, email is required. So I do email now in here and I can just provide this one. It says, oh, thanks for registering and everything would be good. The third one is not utilizing and not using environment variables. So if you're wondering what environment variables are, environment variables are kind of like a variable that is only run and related to the environment where your program or where your application is going to be run in, but it's not going to be included as part of the source code. So for example, in here, I got this .env in here and where you, this is actually a file where you already define your environment variables and they can be injected into the server you're running like Express.js or Node.js. And for this one, this is actually where you define just simple variables and the variables in here are usually stuff like, oh, an API token, for example, I got this chat GPT API token or maybe some encryption passphrase in here. So you only put like super duper kind of secret stuff or stuff for configuration. For 
example, you want to configure the port in here. So you can easily configure that one without going ahead and actually changing the source code whenever you want to change, for example, the ports, or you want to change like, oh, the node environment here when I'm putting into production instead of development or any kind of variable in here that needs configuration or needs like an API token, something that doesn't require the actual code change. Plus, those are actually super, super safe because they're not transferred through the network. They only live in the session they actually been running on. They never live in the source code. That's why they're called environment variables. So simply to utilize environment variables, you've got two ways to do that. The first one is pretty simple. And the best way actually to do it is actually using a .env file. So you just create a .env file inside of your projects in here, and you put all your environment variables in here, then simply go ahead and actually use a package called .env. So you simply just go ahead and install that one. So if I search for .env, just npm install in here, you install that one, you do require .env called config in here. And this will go ahead and read all the environment variables in here into the actual ExpressJS application. Now, let's say we got this pretty simple application where we're going to use chat GPT in here, which is as you chat GPT, I'm just importing that one, actually the, the unofficial proxy API. And here, the bad approach is actually just putting the access token of chat GPT in here right into the source code, which is very bad, very unsecure, and really, really just going to make give you like a hard time when you tr whenever you're trying to change that API token or something goes wrong, you never want to do that. So they'll show you how you basically use it, just hard code that one. And now with the good approach, how you want to use it, it's actually using process.env and you do chat GPT API token. So you access it through process.env and you put the name of the variable in here that you have right in here. So for example, chat GPT API token, that's where you're going to have it right over here. And that's super secure. You can change it whenever you like, whenever you want, super configurable. The second way you've got to actually use environment variables, actually, whenever you try to run your script in here, for example, like yarn start in here, you can actually put right before it, like all the environment variables in here with like, you know, variable name in here equals and the variable value and all of them are going to be just puts and populated inside of your, you know, Node.js application or ExpressJS application. The fourth one is not using API versioning. Now, if you don't know what API version is, basically when you add versions to the API endpoints, block to the path of your API endpoints for everything. So here, for example, we're prepending API forward slash V1, and we're using our API in here. So the wrong way to utilize this one is just not providing API versions. I mean, this could work for you know the first, and it just whenever you're starting a project, it would gonna work for a couple of years maybe, or you know, as far as like when you're actually not doing really huge breaking changes into your APIs. But once you actually introduce breaking changes, or you want to actually keep two versions of the same API endpoints, one an older version and one a newer version, that's where it gets actually really complicated. And that's when you actually need API versioning. So here, instead of just doing an API in here, you can have all the APIs, you can just do API version in here, for example, oh, API v1, this is what I'm going to use, you can actually create, for example, another API in here, and have like this folder structure where you got like API, you get right into it, you got like v1 and v2, each there have their own routes and stuff like that. And each export a different, you know, API router in here, and it can each assign them to different endpoint in here, v1, and v2. Now, whenever you do have a really huge breaking change inside of your API, or you want to introduce a new API endpoint or updates to an existing endpoint like exists on the v1 into the v2, you can easily do that. And you can just tell your users or customers or clients, oh, I actually changed that to v2. So all you're going to do actually just change that to v2. And you're actually good to go. Believe me, it works really well. It's very important. I had a lot of issues with that before you won't regret using it. The fifth one is not securing your ExpressJS server. Well, by securing, I mean like using third party libraries that are well known for security that provides really awesome out of the box kind of security, they add headers and stuff like that. And also in here, for example, this, this is actually the documentation of ExpressJS and actually provides you with like security best practices. So it has a lot of stuff in here. All of them are actually pretty good and make sure you just go ahead and read through all of those. I'm not going to go into all the details because they are very well explained already. But actually what I'm going to go through is actually the first one, which is a really awesome library. I mean, if you're not using this inside of your ExpressJS application or your ExpressJS server, you're basically missing out a lot of stuff. So helmets in here actually allows you to add default headers. So it just like adds out of the box default headers that are going to make your server 10x more secure. And if you really want to know exactly what it adds, what are the type of headers they add in here and you know, the kind of like 
intention behind them, you can actually read through here, go to helmages, github.io, and you can read all the heroes and actually get at it. For example, here it adds content security policy, which is very important for your like server, uh, as like like cross origin open a policy that helps you know isolate your page from XSS. It helps like DNS issues, download options, frame hijacking and session hijacking. And yes, you can actually customize this to however you want. For example, for content security policy, you can add whatever directives you want in here for like, you know, script SRC or frame. I mean, if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, I would really, you know, kind of like advise to go and check out what content security policy, how does it work? And believe me, it's worth it. And because it's actually in middleware, so you can easily just go in and do up, don't use, and you can just use helmet in here, of course, after installing that one. The other important security aspect that you need to pay attention to is actually the course origin resource sharing, which is course. So if you're not familiar with course already and how does it work and how you apply it, there's actually a really, really awesome video tutorial already made a while ago in here, and it's pretty good. It actually explains course really, really well and how you can use it with Express and everything. So I'm gonna find the link description below if you really wanna watch it. So simple in here, there's actually a really awesome kind of NPM kind of package that allows you to add cores into your application. And this will allow you to easily add by default some you know measures and, and, and safety measures for cores. Headers are gonna be added automatically. And of course, you can customize it and configure it however you want. So simply all you gotta do is just app.use, use the MetaWork course in here after installing of course, and you can customize it for example, however you want. For example, if you want origin in here, you can say, oh, I want everyone to basically be able to access my website in here, or I want only local host port 3000 to access this, or only specific domain. And of course, after adding this one, if you go to Postman in here and try to do another request, if you check the response headers in here, you're gonna find like a bunch of headers being added by Helmet and the cores, and all of them actually to protect you from security vulnerabilities and just to make your server as protected as possible. Now, last but not least, actually a really awesome repository in here. I really advise you guys to go ahead and look at actually read through, which is Node Best Practices, has more than 9,000K in here. And this actually provides all the best practices in Node.js ecosystem from handling servers uh, to code styling practices, testing, error handling, so much more. It has a lot, a lot of stuff, a lot of articles, a lot of really, really precious stuff. So go ahead and look into this one actually just to improve your skill sets in Node.js and Express. So anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you all hopefully in the next ones.